Hi guys, Andy Kennedy here from Eastern Tennessee, coming to you live from Shambhala. And today is my final class of the year-long herbal school that I've been part of, Collective Wonder Herbal School with Olivia Fight in Portugal. She's U.S. born, uh, expat living over in Portugal, and with this course came highly recommended to me through a couple of local friends here in Tennessee uh, last year, last fall. And I jumped in with full force because I just really thought, wow, this will kickstart my knowledge base here um, and and all that um, come all that that comes with an amazing class like Olivia has had. So I'm going to share my screen um, and we're going to view from the top and let's get started. OK, so um, that's the last slide go through. There we go. All right. So um, this is my herbal exploration on Shambhala for the Collective Wonder Herbal School Community Foundations um, Medicine Show. So um, the biggest takeaways for me are these three slides or three images on this slide. Um, fire cider was something I had heard of and never made. And the timing of making it for the first time, but also... Um, you know, again and again, but for the first time, for sure. And then um, making it uh, right around the time that I was like starting to feel maybe a little bit under the weather. So that was super fun to really get better and honed in at making fire cider. Burdock is a long old time friend of mine, and we have a beautiful big patch of burdock here. And so I feel like I really communed with burdock the entire summer. Um, so there's that. And then the last slide is this ginger rosemary brandy. Uh, the recipe is from Robin Rose Bennett's book that is our course curriculum for the year. And um, I really loved how, how much medicine was just in those two simple plants. Um, and then I made a, a brandy out of it and used it as a cordial all year for a lot of different things. So absolutely loved that. Um, so primarily before this, I was a one trick pony. And um, I had done a lot of, as you'll see on the next slide, done a lot of things with herbs and plants and uh, gardens and gardening, right? But I, this was my bread and butter when it came to herbalism. I was just doing this comfrey salve. Um, I was growing the comfrey on the bottom right and drying it. <clears throat> That's our garage in Colorado. And then steeping it in oil once it was dry and then converting it into a salve after that. Um, but my mission for this course was just simply to deepen my practice of medicine making and knowledge so that I could grow into our role, uh, the role of medicine woman here on Shambhala. So um, with that simple goal, that one tiny little goal, blown, blown the goal out of the water for sure. So um, here is my full circle and what led me here. Um, I started really having a love of nature and all things natural and from an early age. And so it made sense that once I got into art school, I was using that as a medium and and um, inspiration for myself. So way back then, from all the way to now, like all the pictures I took this year that you're going to see in these slides, you know, that comes from that background for me. Um, and then it just obviously weaves through life. I'm 51. So I've had a lot of experience um, and a lot of the herbs and medicine and naturalist kind of training and master gardener training that I've had in my life all have brought me here to this beautiful thing that we have created here in Tennessee on Shambhala. That picture on the right is is my shared garden with Craig that we had our first shared community garden in 2011. So the biggest focus for me at the beginning of the year was plant identification. Um, I really loved learning and finding um, all of these, that's that burdock in the middle, um, top middle, wild violets, top right, garlic, wild garlic, bottom right, uh, cleavers, top left, and the mushrooms and chicory as well. So lots of identification for me and finding our local allies here. Um, then I really got into deepening my old friend relationships. And these guys I have all used before this course, never used, never harvested fresh uh, or grown fresh and then harvested. Um, and they were all native here. 
They were all here. I didn't plant any of these. Um, and deepening my friendship and relationship with them. Also really realizing that they are not pigeonhole plants. Most of them, I thought, okay, red clover, you're good for reproductive health. Plantain, you're good for bee stings. Burdock, you're good for the liver. Mullen, you're good for the lungs. Peppermint, you're good for nausea, right? We can pigeonhole plants. And the, the expansive understanding I have now of how much these plants can help with instead of just one track, one per particular area of health, right? Um, that is what herbalism, I feel like. That is what I'm un un unpacking this year. Uh, new friends are all of these buddies that I have also found here locally, uh, have never used before, um, I had heard of St. John's wort and, and jewel weed and usnea, um, but I'd never really made medicine, I'd definitely never made medicine out of them. Uh, I'd never harvested them fresh and I'd never had this like loving, deep relationship with them that I have now, the daintiness of jewel weed and how it just completely disappears. No evidence of that plant is where it was, um, just thriving, just two months or a month and a half ago down by our river. So really feel like deepening my relationship with the plants. Then, of course, leans itself into making medicine with them, right? So I have new practices that I got into this year that I had never really done before. Now, I've done foot baths, but never an herbal foot bath with herbs floating around in there, ginger, for instance, to warm the body um, and get the circulation going, cayenne, um, I can't remember what else I put in there, but that that was in the middle of winter, uh, deep in January, you know, and um, really uh, thriving in that, like loving that that practice that that month or two that until the the sun started to come back. Um, the the second picture uh, from the left is the fire cider I already talked about. The wild violet, we made some um, beautiful flower essences of. The burdock that I've talked about, that's me digging up the root on the top right. Bottom left is a nettle soup that we made. It was a broth, like a lovage and nettle broth that we made. It was one of our first recipes of the year. Loved that. And then uh, brandy, this that ginger rosemary brandy that I mentioned on slide one, that's what's going in there on the bottom right. And then the far bottom right is a jasmine honey that I'm still working on. So lots of new things for me. Challenges this year, super interesting, um, mostly around gardening. So not around herbalism, but, you know, of course, that means cultivating my herbs and, and planting things that are not here. Um, I struggled in the garden, but we always struggle in the first couple of years in a new place. So I have patience for that, but that was a challenge. My overwhelm just in building this community and my ha our house and my gar our gardens and my, my like just all my classes and all of the things compounding my work um, that I do. So that that's me sweating and in overwhelm. Um, and then other couple of other little things. <clears throat> Like, for instance, I learned a valuable lesson with this little glass skull on the top right. Don't put things in there that are going to expand and are going to be really hard to get out of that little lip top. So make your tinctures in a jar and then pour the liquid in that skull later. OK, so that was a challenge. And then just our general space. We don't have a lot of space here in the yurt. So um, that that shelving that you see there in the bottom right is actually going to change so that I have more room on our shelves on the wall in the kitchen. Successes are plentiful. Um, the medicine kit is the biggest takeaway, but of course, um, <clears throat> books, new books, um, thriving on the tower garden are nasturtium and calendula. So we have a bumper crop of calendula um harvesting i loved harvesting i've already mentioned that those top right pictures are me and carol harvesting our goldenrod and then me and one of our woofers uh harvesting the mullen and drying stringing that up to dry um the goldenrod those two jars are going to be a brandy and a vodka tincture that we've already strained so um and then the whole list of things that we were meant to do on the right that I haven't fully finished, but I have definitely tackled a lot of. And putting things in a list like this, just like that third slide of my history, um, really help us get grounded and focused instead of in that never enoughism, like I haven't done enough, right? 
Um, this has been a whole year practice and to be able to see all of that on paper for me was huge. It was really, really rewarding for me to put all that down and go, okay, I've, I've done a good job. Primary results for me are tinctures, teas, and oils. Um, we have a boatload of tinctures. I just did um, a uh, an inventory and maybe in the comments below, I'll add a picture of that inventory. I didn't add it in here yet, um, but I've got a great spreadsheet going of all the things um, I've made combos of teas, combos of oils and tinctures, as well as singles. So I've got a good medicine cabinet going. One of our primary focuses too was our first aid kit. And my original plan was this all healing salve, itchy, scratchy salve for, for rashes and, and poison ivy specifically, a tummy tamer tea and the rest of those things on that first list. I didn't tackle all of that because I didn't get there, but some of it I did. Um, and we are building our first aid kit here. So that um, bottom list is what we've got. Um, in addition to quite a few other things that I, uh, like I said, uh, in the dried herb realm that I could make teas and tinctures out of. And then I've got four teas that I'm going to sell and share this Christmas as gifts um, and a little income to cover the costs of things. Um, so we've got four teas, a good sleeper tea, a women's um hormone tea, uh, a general health tea, and a Shambhala-focused tea as well. And last slide, dreams for me for the year and beyond. Um, I really hope to soon plant our herbal spiral garden. That picture in the middle is like in just an example. Um, of course, I continue to hope to grow our apothecary so that it looks like those two pictures on the right on the bottom. The picture on the bottom left is our apothecary, so we're getting there. Um, continuing to harvest and wildcraft and forage. So that's the top right. Um, and then also uh, continuing to plant our food forest on the top left, though. So thanks for watching, everybody. That's my whole year with Collective Wonder Herb School. Um, if you're interested in learning about Olivia's school, uh, the link will also be below. Please check her out. She's absolutely amazing. Her website is also a good resource and her blog is full of good stuff. But the course was extremely affordable. You can pay for it over the whole year but it's really rare to find a course that's under a thousand dollars. And um, for the amount of stuff that I got from this course, it was worth it. So check her out and then continue to check us out. Follow what we're doing on Shambhala. Please share this video with someone if you loved it for ideas. Uh, reach out if you've got questions about some of our recipes and tinctures. And overall, just get out there and get wild crafting yourself. Um, even if it's just one or two plants this coming year, and um, or even collecting some dried plants from online and an, a trusted source. Uh, ask me if you want a trusted source. I've got a couple of great places locally um, that I buy from and also um, online so that you can just start making your own medicine. It's not hard. There's some great books out there. Um, so get cracking. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And um, I hope you have an absolutely amazing day and continue to make your own medicine and sustain yourself for your health, your family's health, and your future.